how's the pre-season going for you so far? Uh, pretty good. I haven't had any surgery or injury so far to date, so I've been able to get through the majority of the training, and uh, I haven't done it for a little while, so it's good to be out there and training with the main group from the start. Your um, your last season was pretty strong, all Australian. Why the score? How did you sort of view your year? Um, I think I was just able to play consistent footy for probably the longest time that I have for a long time. So uh, again, without injuries and being able to stay in the main squad for as long as possible and train and um, just being around everyone as much as possible uh, was probably the, the big thing for me with consistency. Ball movement seems to be the, the theme this pre-season and it looked to be again this morning. How have you seen how the guys have adjusted to some of the things that have been brought in? Yeah, we've, uh, we've spent probably the majority of the pre-Christmas period with ball movement. So um, with the inclusion of Brent Guerra and David Hale and uh, obviously coming from Hawthorne who are probably the best attacking side in the competition for a few years now, we've uh, tried to imply a few things that uh, they've sort of brought with them and uh, it has been the focus for that sort of pre-Christmas time and a little bit into now. So uh, we're learning, we're not trying to tweak too much, but just little bits and pieces. Just sharpen it, if anything. Uh, sharpen it. Oh, just what? in terms of just getting better, basically, at hitting targets and making decisions and things like that. Yeah, I think our, our kicking volume's been up a little bit the pre-Christmas break, um, so the period pre-Christmas. So uh, it's a little bit of skill execution with a little bit of um, a bit of a change in the way we've been working the ball, but uh, yeah, just trying to get the kicks in and making sure that we hit uh, our kicks as much as possible. You, David uh, said on Friday that you've only sort of moved into the line groups in the last couple of weeks. There'll be a slight change in the defensive set up given that Luke comes out. What, what are you expecting in terms of the back six or seven that are going to shape up this year? Uh, I'm not sure that we'll have too much change. Obviously uh, Luke moving out of the side is going to be a little bit different because he's been there for such a long time and has been a great player. But last year, bits and pieces, we didn't have Luke there and then we didn't have Jono and then Zach wasn't there. and. Uh, we've adjusted. We've got young guys. Alex Pierce has been uh, playing some good solid footy back and forward, and uh, Sam Collins the same. So we've got guys that can come into the side. I don't think I don't think it'll change our structure too much. But in saying that, we'll move into that a little bit more in the coming weeks. Yeah, Sam settled in as a mature age body who's, who's played a lot of good VFL footy. Yeah, he's good. He's um, like you said, he's a bigger guy, so um, his body is sort of ready to go for AFL and. Uh, he can mix it with the big guys. I think he does a lot of training on Jack Hanneth and Matt Tabernard and these sort of guys, and a bit on Pav too. So he'll he'll learn from playing on experienced AFL footballers. But his body, I think, he's ready to go. Is every do you have a sense that everybody has to step up a little bit to replace Luke McFarlane, or no? how does it work? Or would there be one, or would there be one that you sort of look to? Uh, I think we all have to improve. He's um he's obviously taken the the best forward for a long time now and done a really good job, but. Uh, we pride ourselves on probably not having too many one-on-ones in the D50. Where we can help each other out, we can. And um, we're going to have to have someone that's going to fill that void. Obviously, we're not there, but um, yeah, hopefully we'll all sort of improve a little bit and won't have to do it all uh, one person. You mentioned before you didn't have Zach and, and Jono a lot last year. How, how difficult was that to manage? It was something that sort of was underrated. I know Ross mentioned it a few times that you guys were able to cover that really well. How hard was that to manage throughout the year? Um, it can be hard. It's a little bit, I suppose, with uh, the different teams that you're playing. Because some will play three tall forwards, and then it stretches a little bit and makes it a bit harder with uh, whoever comes in to play on that third tall forward. So uh, some teams will go shorter, and it's uh, a little bit easier for us to, to match up than when we've got Cam and Spurry and Tom Sheridan, and yep, quite smaller guys. But um, we sort of work our way around it, and like I said, try not to leave someone one out on their own in the D50 where we can. So David Mundy's the captain. What, what does he bring to the job, do you think? Yeah, he's, um, he's been in the leadership group for a long time now and uh, I think on field he's, he's really consistent for us and has been for a long time. He's, uh, he's a bigger body mid and puts his body on the line for us uh, as much as possible and around the club I think the way that he acts, he, he's the same everywhere no matter who he talks to and who he's around and I think his consistency with that too and getting around the young guys and just being an influence for them. He's, uh, he's been a really strong leader, probably obviously with Pav being the captain, but from Dave's been there for a long time doing uh, exactly what we ask of him, so yeah, it's a good thing for him to be captain. Were you surprised that Fifey didn't come straight in, or do you think that's the future of the club, Nat Fife? Uh, I wasn't surprised that Dave was the captain. Um, Fifey's only been in the leadership group for a year, and obviously the way he plays is obviously as good as anyone, but um, he uh, he's obviously a great leader for us on the field and off, but he's only been there in the leadership group for one year, and Dave's been there for a long time, so I wasn't surprised at all, no. Did the players obviously see that maybe he needs a couple more years of building that leadership before he gets the, the top gig in maybe a couple of years? Is that sort of one of the reasons? Uh, I can't speak for the whole playing group, but there would have been three or four guys that could have captained the footy club, and 
Um, I, I, don't, I think it's been a strength of ours with Pav being the captain for so long. We've had a leadership group now for three or four years that have been the same, with Spurry and Aaron Sandilands and Dave Mundy and then the inclusion of Fife. Yeah, I think there could have been anyone that could have filled the role and um, Dave I think is a great choice. Um, but yeah, there could have been anyone. I think many on the outside looked at Nat and thought the time's perfect after a brown though and everything else. But you think Nat might be a little bit disappointed that he didn't get the, the top uh, gig? I don't think I don't know that he'd be disappointed. I'm sure he would have been. Well, he would have loved to captain the club as anyone would. But um, he's still a young player. I think people sort of don't realise how young he is because of how good he is on the field and how good he has been and how quickly he's gotten to where he is. He's still a young guy, so he's got plenty of footy ahead of him and. Um, yeah, I don't think he's disappointed that he's not the captain. Speaking on field at the moment, he's out there testing himself mm. yet again. It's a weekly question, but he seems as though he's edging closer and closer now. Yeah, I don't know exactly where he is, but I know that he's, a, I mean, he's an outstanding preparer. I know that he's going to be doing everything to get himself right, but uh, he has been out there training and uh, doing bits and pieces, along with Harley Bell and the others out there, but I don't think he'll be too far away. Not too far away from joining that main group, though? I don't no, I don't think, well, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. You mentioned Alex Pierce before, he's been in the rehab group since Christmas to our eye at least. How's, how's he tracking and what's he battling? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what he's battling. I think he's going okay um, and nothing too serious, so he shouldn't be far off there. Are you expecting him to, to take another step forward as a player this year, given that the potentially showed in the few games that he played last year? Yeah, I think so. Um, we want everyone to keep improving and um, he's, he's played a lot as a defender, but played forward as well, which is a... It's pretty impressive for a young guy to come in and play solid football as a defender and then to move forward when we needed him. So uh, I think he'll definitely improve. I'm not sure where he's uh, going to be consistently this year, but at least we know that we've got someone that can play at both ends if we need it. And young, Darcy, young Darcy living with you. Mm. Um, you obviously spent a bit of time with him. How's he settled in? Uh, he's going well. So he, um, yeah, he lived with me for about two or three weeks now. and. Uh, he's been back and forward home now over Christmas, but uh, I think he knows that now that he's here, he's settled in and ready to go. But yeah, he was great with me. He's um, done everything right so far, and um, yeah, I think he's excited to get into it. Garrett, you bobbed up in the forward line a couple of times later in the year. Is it for granted that you're going to be playing across half back this season? Um, I played there a couple of times last year. Um, I haven't played a whole lot there really, to be honest, in my whole life. But uh, I've done a little bit of training in the pre-season, sort of going there, um, and bits and pieces where I can just in case. But I don't know how much time we're playing forward, if any, this year. So you've trained for some flexibility in your role, but as far as you're aware, you'll probably still be playing down there. Uh, well, yeah, as far as I'm aware, I still train um, as a defender majority of the time. But I try and sort of put my head into the forwards as much as I can. So I have a bit of an idea just in case I do go forward again. But uh, as far as I'm aware, yeah, defence, I think. Just back on the skills which we talked about earlier, did you feel that was one of the differences come finals and why you didn't go back to another grand final? I, did you think that you had to get better in that department? Uh, personally, I think I do, and I think everybody does as a group. When you play someone like Hawthorne, you can see how they really keep the ball for the opposition a little bit. And it's, even in, in the game, was almost over by the end, but they we couldn't get the ball off them in the last five or ten minutes. And... They execute with their feet so well that they keep con like control of the footy. So I think it's something that we need to really focus on. Even if we can just get the ball, there's little kicks inside, we make sure we hit them and it'll be an improvement for us. you think you're getting better already after a month or two spent working on? Yeah, I think we are. We've got some work to do still, but I think we're definitely improving. I think um, execution's always something you can get better at, just having the ball in your hand and trying to just keep practice those kicks every now and again. But um, a little, with a little tweak in the way we're going to move the footy, I think it'll help us. And your old teammate Ryan Crowley could get a AFL lifeline. Mm. How do you think he'd go coming back through a year out? Um, I think he'd go all right. He's always, he's always been a really fit guy and he's into his fitness, so I don't think he would have lost a lot of that uh, desire to play footy and the fitness to play footy. So I know that he loves to run and um, I think he'd really like the opportunity to play footy again. I think he would have obviously liked to... Um, play footy here if he could have, but um, yeah, I think playing AFL footy would be great for him again. Is there still a role for a tagger in footy, do you reckon? Is this, has it moved on or do some teams perhaps can still use it? Uh, I think you can still use it, definitely. Um, we sort of went away from it with Ryan not being at the footy club and it worked for us having like Lockie Neal and Dave Mundy and Stephen Hill and Fifey in there at different times, but I think there's definitely room for a tagger and uh, Ryan has played footy before without tagging, so uh, he could play as a freewheeling mid, who knows? So. How do you think he'd be received? I know that Doc has played us to them here this year. How would he be received from the playing group, but also the, the Freo faithful that have stuck fat with him for so long? Yeah, um, I mean, if he plays against us, he's the opposition. So, um, 
that we'll be treating the same as everybody else. But I'm sure um, after the game and when everything's done and dusted, we'll say hello and cross paths. But that'll be it otherwise. And what do you make of the Bombers situation when you kept it coming against them? Do you think they're going to be terribly weak or you just got to treat them as another team that may be able to challenge you? Or yeah, we'll treat them like any other team, I think. They're going to have some, by the look, some pretty good top-up players anyway. So uh, I think they'll still be competitive and you can't take anybody lightly. But um, yeah, it'll be an interesting game, especially if Ryan's playing.